Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to Dylan Talks Tone, and this is the next video, really part two in our series on guitar setup. And this time, after we discussed neck relief, we're gonna talk about nut height and setup, okay? Uh, this might be one of the most important components to our guitar tone, is for, for many reasons, tuning stability, um, actual the the containment of the energy when we go back to our original video about guitar setup talking about on an electric guitar especially trying to retain as much of that string energy in between the two uh, points of the tonal area um, this is where a lot of that energy can be lost if it's done incorrectly the other thing is it can really affect how the guitar stays in tune because of the friction uh, that happens at the nut especially if we're dealing with a Bigsby or some other sort of tremolo. A Bigsby is an excellent example because the string moves back and forth a lot in here. Um, so friction is a huge deal. Um, the other thing is the intonation of the guitar can be affected by the nut height and we'll show you why in just a minute. So this is a huge, huge deal to our guitar setup. Um, this is probably one of the most important and maybe one of the more overlooked things. Everybody talks about action, but this is maybe one of the most important things of our tone setup or of, of our guitar setup. <laughs> and I, I make that mistake in speech because it literally has so much to do with our tone. So let's get into it. First of all, we know that the nut establishes um, one end of our tonal area, the saddle being the other, okay? And from the nut to the saddle is our scale length. And so making sure that this is a proper straight edge uh, here to, that's really what all of our other intonation and everything is, is uh, based on is this particular zero point here, okay? Now, uh, the other thing is the, a lot of our playability of our guitar is determined by the nut. So, how do we set this up or how do we want it? Well, you know, it's, it's really, there's a, there's a few things that go into it, but it's basically uh, a bit of a feel thing, okay? And the nut is gonna obviously um, determine how far down on the string that we have to press. And it's gonna make the guitar very playable or not playable at all. So typically, the way we like to measure a nut is with a feeler gauge right here underneath the string, okay? And we like it to be, um, for a conventional middle of the road setup, I start at 20 thousandths. Um, on some guitars, depending on the fret quality and depending on the type of player, we can go down to a lot lower. You know, you can go down to 15 thousandths. Um, on some sort of guitar where you're gonna play a lot of slide, I keep it higher at 25 to 30 thousandths right here underneath uh, at the first fret. Okay, now there is a danger in going too high to having too much space here. And that is, anytime we are fretting a note, we are pulling down on the string. The further down we pull on the string, the further away from true pitch it is, okay? So when we have this, this string at, let's use the A string at A440, and then we want to fret a B, Okay, we fret that B, but it's never really perfectly B because we have to pull it down. Now, the further we pull it down, the further away from true pitch we turn it. So this means that if we have a lot of intonation problems, if our chords, our first position chords down here are having a lot of intonation problems, it may have nothing to do with this end of the guitar. It always kind of interacts a little bit, so we won't say nothing, but it could be because our nut height is too high and we're actually pulling our strings down uh, too far, okay? But before we check that, we must check our neck relief because what if we have way too much neck relief in here? and now we're pulling our strings even further down. You see how this uh, kind of all works together, okay? The other thing is maybe our string height is too high down here. Remember that when we set our nut height at 20 thousandths, if our, set, our saddle height isn't at like a nominal two millimeters at the 14th fret, remember it's a straight edge, right? So if this is way high and we set this at 20 thousandths, then we bring this down, this is gonna bring this down a little bit, right? Because it's the same straight edge. The string is the same straight edge. 
So typically what I like to do, not to jump ahead in my process, but I like to just, I don't get technical with it, but I take my uh, gauge here and I go to the 12th fret and I set it at like two millimeters. Just, just real quick, set it at two millimeters. And then I come over here to my nut and uh, I check to see what my string height is all the way across. Now, what if I have to file it? There are specialized files for this. These are nut files that are gauged for the string diameter. So this 36 is for this particular A string, okay? And this is what we use. Now, when we actually file a nut, this is very, very important. If we file the nut and we keep this completely straight up and down and do not move it, then what can happen is the nut can begin to grab the string and when we tune it, you know, we get that creaky noise and it goes creak and then it goes past where we want it in tune and then we have to get it back and then it creaks. It's because that nut is too high, it's too tight. Okay. And then when we do a bend, it may stay, it may like stay in a certain spot and not return to pitch. Every time we press down on the string, every time we bend the string, every time we use a tremolo, we are, um, we are moving the string in the nut just a little bit. And if it does not have the freedom to return to pitch, then we have a tuning stability issue. Okay. Now, if you look at this nut here, you will see that these strings are down in the nut a little bit. A lot of people on the internet will argue with me and say that string is supposed to be halfway out of that nut slot. You would think so because you would want the least amount of friction possible on the string, obviously. However, depending on the player's style, depending on the string gauge and the uh, scale length of the guitar, if the tension is a little bit low, that string can pop out of there very easily. The other thing that can happen, depending on the break angle of this peg head, is it doesn't have enough pressure to press down very well, and then we start to lose sustain because that string kinda gives a little quiver as it, as it returns from pitch, okay? So I actually like to run my strings down into the nut. And people are gonna say, well, that's just gonna kill your tone and it's gonna give you all kinds of tuning stability problems not if you cut the nut correctly. If the nut groove is the correct shape, you will not have friction issues and then you will be able to control the brake angle in here and have no issues at all. The brake angle of the nut should match uh, the brake from the nut to the corresponding tuner for the string. Now I'm using the same file for all this, but I'm just trying to show you. Uh, so that when it goes over the nut, we do not have uh, this straight edge on this side moved and we don't have any kind of buzziness or anything like that because a buzz is not just a buzz. Remember this, on your guitar, a buzz is not just a buzz. It is the dissipation of energy that should be trying to be retained. So if you have a buzz down here, if you have a buzz here, if you have a buzz in the neck, it is a buzz is a dissipation of energy in the string that is not going where you want it to go. So if there is a buzz here, that is tone that's getting away, okay? So just remember that, especially in the nut. So as we cut this thing, we get it down to the proper height. Uh, that then can be the next baseline for our string height. This is another thing that if you want me to, I will do some very detailed videos on how to actually do uh, the nut filing and, and that sort of thing. But this might be another thing if you are not comfortable working on your own guitar to have somebody that really knows what they're doing, uh, do it. Let's talk about materials and wear. I like to use bone. The most popular, uh, obviously on a less expensive guitar, you're gonna have some plastic, okay? There's also a Corian material. Um, there is bone, um, there's graphite, there is brass. These all wear very differently. Uh, remember that every time you tune the guitar, that thing's going back and forth in there, and every time you bend the string, that string is going back and forth in there, so they do wear over time. Um, and there are tonal differences based on the density of the material. 
Um, now I won't get into what those are because that is a very subjective thing and it has a lot to do with the other end of the tone. So if you're, what your saddles are can affect what, how it interacts with the nut because remember that's energy going back and forth from here to here. Uh, so there's a lot more to it than that, um, that you just have to, uh, investigate for yourself if you want to play with nut materials. The only thing I'll say is it's a bit of work, so just do some reading on it. Um, and bone has been kind of the standard for longevity, also for uh, because the durometer is fairly high. Uh, it's kind of like longevity crossed with the tone that you get from it gives you a good a good material. Um, there are some synthetic materials out now uh, that are very good that rival bone. I find personally that I don't like to work with them as much because they don't, when I'm actually making the nut, they don't, um, uh, they don't act right under the file for me, if that makes sense. So it's not necessarily a tone thing for me. It's just like when I'm building a guitar, that's, that's the thing that I, I, I like how, I, how it works when I'm, when I'm actually building it. Um, so that's why I kind of go with go with bone some more too. So that's it. Basically the long and the short of it is this. Set your string height down here that uh, is about you know two millimeters or so something not not crazy just middle of the road spec which is usually two millimeters. Take your feeler gauge check underneath your first fret and set it to your desired height. You can go to your manufacturer's owner's manual or technical information and find out what it's on a Telecaster. It's two millimeters at the 12th fret and it is 20 thousandths at the, uh, at the first fret underneath the strings. So use that as a baseline and then if you are close but you want to change something, uh, then you can change it from there. Um, mind your angle to make sure that the string angle uh, as it goes through the nut matches as it dives off to the tuner and that will be determined by your brake head angle and your uh, tuning posts and also uh, make sure that you allow when you're cutting the nut for room for the string to move uh, in the slot so that we don't add friction uh, to the action of playing guitar okay and um, and that's basically it you know, obviously in practice, there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, but that just gives you an idea of what you're shooting for. And if you have any questions about it, you can definitely leave them on this video. My name is Dylan. This has been Dylan Talks Tone, part two of setup, uh, the basic concept of your nut setup. I hope you have a great day.